Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and we got the Wii Upshot here. Now, these are made, I believe, in a limited run because they are numbered. This is 146 out of 410. Now, I want to thank the homie Timbo for sending me this knife to check out. I really appreciate it because this was one I was really wanting to check out like I, I this is right up my alley i love the way it looks uh we does an incredible job with their knives so let's get into it so we have a 20 cv blade beautiful blade by the way uh drop point blade we have a beautiful swedge up top that's going to bring a little strength down to that tip yet make it very acute so um you know excellent penetration <laughs> <laughs> excellent for penetrating you know objects and everything but yeah beautiful swedge up top awesome flat grind this is how geometry is done and we'll get more into that in one second titanium frame lock t8 hardware all the way around except for the clip but yeah beautiful construction nice width and depth very neutral grip which i really like it's very comfortable in the hand you know considering how thin it is it does have a slight taper that goes down but yeah very nice in the hand yes i feel the clip a bit but not bad not bad at all the jimping is well done it does lock you in and my finger lands right there now if i'm using the choil it, I'm right at the end of it, but I'm still there. So let's talk about the action and then we'll get into the cutting. So the action on this baby is very reliable. Good, good flipping action. Now, um, aside from the flipping action, you can also reverse flick this baby. And I mean, it is easy so easy because the detent is a little light and i'm not saying it's light because you know when you say oh the detent's light people take it as oh it's gonna fail no this is a reliable flipper what i mean is that it's light enough to where i can put my finger on the side of the blade and i can flick it is it it's not gonna pop out or anything like that but I, I tend to flick this knife almost more than flip it because it's just so easy. I can pull it right out of the pocket and bang, it's open. It, I mean, it, it's, it's a reliable way to open this particular knife. And it has to do with the way the blade is out of the handle. It gives you a nice good amount right here, right where your finger lands when you're holding it. It just lands right there. And it has a bead blasted finish, which adds just a slight bit of texture. And because of the swedge and everything, it just makes it to where it's, it's really easy. Now, back to the flipping action. It does have jimping that is nice and grippy it does grab you back so uh it's not really pokey but you know it is rounded and so it's not um you know it's not uh how can i say it, it, it it's rounded right it's rounded so it is slightly pokey i guess you could say i don't want to make it seem like it's uh uncomfortable or anything but if the detent was stronger it would be uncomfortable because of its shape but since it is the the d10 strength it is it's very very reliable you can push button it i tend to light switch it i just basically hook my finger right on top let the jimping kind of snag my finger a little bit and yank down and it's very reliable you're only going to fail it if you mean to and i can fail it though but that's with any knife out here so very reliable flipping action when you unlock it the lock bar it does have a cutout on both sides. Now, you would think that that seems like it's a little tough to get to. It's actually very easy. Um, not only, I mean, I can go around to the front like this and just push it to the side, but I also find that I can go right from an angle as well. Now, with the lock bar, it actually is slightly raised from the other side, but it's very, very slightly. So it almost looks like it's lined up perfectly. Um, but yeah, it's very slightly raised, which actually makes it very easy to get to that lock bar. And the detent ball, when you unlock it, nice and early. So you're pretty much always past it when you unlock it. If you hold it real high, yeah, it'll hit the detent ball. But if you hold it right in the middle, right where it wants to be held, you're past it. No issues. 
And yeah, it works great. It's very, very smooth on the drop. Not drop shutty, but it's close to it. I mean, you can, if you give it any influence, you can get it down in just one little tiny nudge. Now, if you let it drop itself, it's a very light blade. So yeah, it's gonna take some encouragement. But like I said, it's incredibly smooth. It is very, very smooth. So um, it's not like fall shut action, but two shakes and it's down. And if you really wanted to, one good shake and it's all the way shut. Now, nice and centered, beautiful centering. The build quality is really nice on it. Um, going back to the action, it does have ceramic caged bearings and it does have an internal stop pin. So it has a track basically right there and the pin, the stop pin is hooked to the blade and as it comes around you can see it right there and it locks up so great lockup nice strong um strong stop pin and lockup it makes it very very solid from all directions and it does have a steel lock bar insert and over travel stop so you're never gonna have to worry about lock stick or unspringing the lock or anything like that which is really nice now cutting in ergos this thing cuts like a beast it cuts so good the geometry is really nice. I measured this one just under 15 thousandths. It was about 13, 14 thousandths behind the edge. And yeah, it cuts. Um, great, great geometry. Nice thin edge. Uh, the blade stock and the taper from the spine down to the edge is done very, very well. And yeah, so with the leverage you get in the handle, it... It, it's very comfortable when using and you you know you can go all the way up to the choil and get right behind the edge to block anything from getting into that choil you know if you have problems with the choil sometimes i snag the choil too especially when i'm trying to cut really fast but i can prevent that just by covering it with my finger because they give you a pretty generous choil here so Passing through things and the ergos when pushing it through materials is really, really good. It cuts so good. Even when I doubled up cardboard and I put two pieces together, it still cut so good. Very good cutter. Now, if we get into utility cuts, um, I mean, I think the blade shape speaks for itself. It's almost like a, a chef's type of blade shape, you know, like a kind of like a kitchen knife. So you have a nice acute tip that actually, if you look, it kind of goes right perfect without being a spear point. It goes right perfect with the, the pivot, but the belly, the way how it swoops up and then the tip, you know, or the spine goes straight and then down, it makes it to where just a little bit of angle and you are to the tip. It, this thing is made for utility cuts. Um, so utility cuts are great with this thing. Yes, you're gonna wanna be careful with that tip, not to break it, but it's not that kind of knife. It's, the, it's an EDC knife. So you're gonna get a lot of performance out of this knife. It will work fantastic for just about any type of cutting, even slicing, you know, it doesn't have a lot of belly, but since from the, the from the choil up to the tip, it has kind of just like a one continuous belly. So you're gonna be able to get some slicing done. You can get the edge down to a surface pretty easily without uh, hitting your fingers, you know, with just a little bit of an angle. So precision tip, utility cuts are great, slicing is great, push cuts are great, all of it's great. If we move up and look at this choil, well done. You see the plunge grind starts here, ends here, lots of life there, and you don't have anything in the way back here. So great sharpening choil. I'm very, very happy with this sharpening choil. Now let's talk about the 20 CV. 20 CV, so from my experience with Wii, Wii does a good job with their M390 and 20 CV. If you've had different experiences, let me know down in the comments. I've had very good experiences with their 20CV and M390. Um, and I can't say that for a lot of companies, I'll be honest. I mean, I can say that I've had good experiences and bad experiences, but for the most part, we has 
it hasn't really I've never I haven't found any yet that has really shown me anything bad. Um, I've had great experiences with it. I've sharpened a lot of it. All of it's taken a really good edge. Um, they uh, seem to hold a really good edge. I, like I said, I haven't had no issues with it. So um, I think they're doing a pretty good job with it. And I hope they continue to do that because I think they should take pride in doing good heat treats, especially for 2021. Companies should be taking pride in how good their heat treat is done on their steel because as we move forward in the future, it's going to come out. More and more testing is going to happen. And if you're slacking on your heat treat, you can bet it's going to come out. With this one, I did not sharpen this particular one, but I did hone it. I did strop it. The edge came back up like that. I mean, just a couple swipes on very lightly on a ceramic rod, a few passes on the strop, and the edge came back super sticky, very nice. And it was pretty dull by the time I did that because I had used it quite a bit. So expectedly, it had lost a lot of bite from the edge, but got it right back really quick with a little bit of honing, which I like to see from good, you know, from a good heat treat. You know, you should be able to strop it back pretty, pretty good. So next thing, the clip, clip and carry. Clip works great fantastic clip i know it looks like a budget clip it is a titanium clip you can see it is it's got like this uh this weird anno that's kind of got like a, a hammered finish to it with the speckles that match the pivot it does stand out but uh it works great in and out of the pocket really nice it's not inset but it is reversible as you can see uh, but it does sit on top of the scales but i never had an issue with you know, anything. It worked great. It worked just fine. Um, great clip. And you can feel this coating on there. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, I'm sure it's not going to be the most durable coating, but it seems like it's actually pretty durable the way it is. I'm not sure what kind of, you know, what it, what it is like, meaning like if it's just anno or if it's, uh, some type of finit or some type of, um, uh, coating like a Cerakote or something. I'm not positive. I have no idea, but it, it seems like it's holding up pretty good. Now the fit and finish and everything is done extremely well. No milling on the inside, which I'm actually happy about. I, I'll be honest. I'm sick of knives trying to make tools and knives as light as possible. To me, this thing is already super light. I mean, it is, it's really light. The blade doesn't weigh nothing. So taking more weight off from this, it would wind up feeling weak and cheap. I, you know, I like that there's a little bit of weight or it's not even, there's no weight here. I'm just saying like, I'm glad they didn't take more weight off. So, uh, but the screws and hardware, really good quality. I've always said, uh, we has really good titanium hardware because it, um, uh, it's hardened. So it's not soft. A lot of companies that are using titanium hardware are using soft titanium hardware. We use as hard, um, hardened titanium. So love it, love it, love it, love it. Now let's talk about some negatives though. So, um, I do have a couple, um, and they're really not that big of a deal, but we'll get into it anyway. So one, the, the hardware is black, the pivots, uh, bronze. Pivots bronze, hardware's black, clip is blue, and you know, gold with the to match the the pivot. That doesn't make sense. And then the backspacers are bronze. Why not just do the bronzed hardware? Which, if you, we look at the kite fin here, look at how they did the kite fin. Every, you know, the hardware, all this matches, it looks really good. So something like that would have been cool. Now I'm not saying the clip looks bad i think it's kind of unique and it does kind of add a little pop i like it and you know it's not that big of a deal some people i heard said said that they don't like it i'm okay with it but the clip you know it kind of looks some people would say like an afterthought like they did kind of the same thing with the kite fin where you know it is it's a titanium clip so but it looks so similar to their budget clips that 
you know, it kind of makes you think like, why, why wouldn't you just do, um, you know, I don't know, like some sort of really good titanium milled clip, or if you're going to do a loop over deep carry clip, something that just, that looks like there was a little bit more thought put into it rather than an exact replica of your budget clips. So, but it works and functions really good. So, and I think that's the most important thing about a clip is how it functions. But, you know, I think a little bit more thought. Uh, they did, like I said, add the pop of color. So that was, I guess, their thought on it. And I'm not mad at it. But uh, the hardware, though, why not make all the hardware match the pivot? You know, then it would really pop. Or just make them, I don't know. I think making them all bronze would have been really nice, kind of like on this kite thing here. And I'll show some size comparisons here in a second. But I think that would have really made it pop, especially with the backspacers the way they were. Or maybe blue, you know, since you have the blue clip. Um, I just think that that kind of made it uh, stand out a little bit. Or that stood out to me as, you know, like the, how they did three different colors instead of two when they had a great opportunity for um for two colors the next thing is this bead blast um i'm not a huge fan of bead blast this is particularly for me uh, i find that bead blasted finishes are the most susceptible to corrosion now this is 20 cv so I, it's plenty stainless i i don't i doubt we'd ever see corrosion or unless you're not taking care of your knife but if you're taking care of it i doubt you'll ever see corrosion on it but I would have rather seen a stone washed or a satin finish on it. Um, just the bead blast, you know, it, like I said, it's susceptible. It makes pockets for moisture and it makes it to where it, it can be susceptible to corrosion. So, so one other thing, and you know, like I said, I think they do a good job with their heat treats on their M390 and 20 CV. However, I noticed their HRC listed at knife center, which it's still available right now at the HRC said between 59 and 61. So between 60, 61, 62, 63, that's where we want to see M390 and 20 CV. We do not want to see 59. 59 is the bottom of the bucket. So if that's the case and they are getting that, it would be nice to see them change that number you know, up to between 60 and 63 for M390 and 20 CV so that we can get the, you know, the best performance out of this steel rather than the lower end of the HRC for this steel. Now, like I said, I do think they're doing a good job with it, uh, but you know, that's how they advertised it. So maybe they're doing the upper end of that and, you know, they're just, saying that so that they can cover bases if it is a little bit softer than um you know than they typically try to hit i'm not sure but you know i'm just saying because i did see that that's how it was listed um you know we we like to see it between 60 and 63 but other than that if we really take a look at everything like look at how we have this chamfer down the side right here and it's also right here all the little fine details you know you don't just pick them up by seeing the picture but when you get it in hand you really see these little tiny fine details that all pop out that look really nice and it shows how much care was put in here all the edges are knocked down really nice it's really sm soft and smooth in the hand yes this black coating will probably take scratches let's take a look at this one because this one basically has the same finish let's see um and it's not too bad and i've carried this thing quite a bit but uh, you know little scratches here and there are going to happen uh, eventually but it looks like this one's holding up pretty good i thought there was a big scratch down it maybe i'm wrong but either way you know just just know that that is a possibility all right, let's check out some quick size comparisons really quick. Here is the VV Elementum button lock. They're right around the same size. They have some similarities in them, and that's probably another reason why I like it so much because this is an awesome, awesome tool. Um, here is the Wii Kite Fin. It is definitely bigger than the Kite Fin, and it's also thicker than the Kite Fin. You can see how much thicker it is if you have the Kite Fin. 
which does make it a lot more comfortable in the hand. If you're looking for a budget option, here is the Civivi Imperium. It comes in many different options, but they have a lot of similarities. They're also very different in a lot of ways. This is a front flipper with thumb studs, but you know, the, the overall look and, you know, blade style and everything, there's some similarities there and the length and everything. And then one of my favorite Wii knives, the Wii Malice. Love this knife. Yes, it is a lot bigger than the Upshot, but at least you got a comparison with it. And then here's a little bit smaller of a knife, the Wii Vapor. Definitely dwarfed by the Upshot. Awesome knife. Nice thin hollow ground blade. A coated titanium with uh, carbon fiber inlays, titanium hardware, awesome, awesome little knife. And then here's a Benchmade 940. A lot of people know the size of the Benchmade 940 and they are very similar in length at the very least. So if you know the size of the 940, you basically know the size of the Upshot, which is a great EDC size knife. So I'm very impressed with it. I like it a lot. Um, I think that, I love that we, when they make knives, um, you know, whether they're high end or not, they make them and still consider the tool aspect of them, the cutting performance, the sharpening, the sharpen ability, the, the clip, the carry, the action. They, they think about a lot of the things from a user's aspect. And I like that. I liked it, you know, even though it looks so good and the action's so good, it also works good. It's going to sharpen good. It's going to hold up over time. It's not going to get ugly after the first sharpening. I love that. So, uh, yeah, as a tool, as a great knife. Yeah, they did a great job. So there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.